I wrote a book called The Music Business is Corrupt or Maybe You Just Can't Sing. And I have to say, I never thought that I would be an author. It's self-published. It's not a New York Times bestseller, but it talks about everything that I've been thinking and feeling ever since I first got in the music business. What I have learned through working with various clients and colleagues and students is that the one thing they had in common was that they always complained. They complained about the record label. They complained about their manager. They complained about the business. They complained about their teachers and their advisors and the school. And what I wanted them to know more than anything else was that, you know what? When there's no one left to blame, because you've blamed everybody, including the kitchen sink and the plumber that fixed it, when there's no one left to blame, maybe it's you. Because the one thing that all of your experiences have in common is you. So that's why I wrote this book. And I think that my book will be helpful to people, especially those who have an open mind and who want more information and want more knowledge. Because it's not for everyone. There's a little bit of language in it, but it's very, very candid. And I like to say that I say to your face what other people are saying about you behind your back, the things that other people in the industry that we sit around at bars and, and, and restaurants and laugh about other people doing. I'm actually telling you what we're laughing about in the book so that you will recognize that your, it's not just your talent, but it's your personality, it's your attitude, it's the way that you present yourself that will help you to become a success. When I first started, in the music business in particular. I got into the business because I loved music and I wanted to make money. I wanted to make my living in the entertainment business. I quickly became disillusioned, however, working as an entertainment attorney because many of my clients and many of the people that I work with, I perceive to be greedy, uh, disloyal, out for themselves, and these were artists, these were musicians, and I had a really bad taste in my mouth for musicians until I became an academic, until I started teaching musicians, people who were really, really in love with their craft and worked very hard at what they were doing. And that's when I realized the importance of music and I got to see how music was created. So my creed today, which is, I, I have a couple of sayings that I live by. One is when there's no one left to blame, maybe it's you. The second one is what's not your fault is still your problem. But both of those creeds took time to develop. It took time. It, it developed over years of experience, of working with people, of watching how the industry has changed over time, and just, um, and just life, life experience as well, are ways that I developed my, my mantra, which I live by today. What I have found is the biggest struggle that students have in trying to turn their academic career into a professional career is that they don't have enough knowledge, meaning knowledge about how the industry actually works. What I try to do is to give them as much hands-on and experiential experience as I possibly can, but nothing takes the place of doing it. You can sit in a classroom all day long, you can listen to lectures, you can view videotapes, you can write papers, you can write marketing plans, but there's nothing like actually doing it hands-on. So that's one of the things that I try to incorporate into my program. I make sure that students have opportunities to practice their craft, to utilize the skills that they learned, to operate using the information that they've learned in class. And the biggest problem that I've seen is that in other degree programs, they just don't get enough hands-on experience. So I make sure that my students do. I don't care how good a musician you are. If people don't like you, they are not going to work with you. If you have a poor work ethic, if you can't show up on time, if you can't respect other people and work as a team player, especially if you're going to be in, in an opera or an orchestra or a ballet, whatever it is you're doing, if you can't work with other people, you're not going to make it. You may get the job because of your skills, but you won't keep that job because there are many employers who would actually take somebody a little less talented because we can teach a less talented person to be more talented. We can't teach you to have a personality. We can't teach you to have a good attitude. We can't teach you how to respect people and work to pe work with people and all of those interpersonal skills that are really, really important. So talent, you know, much of it is, is innate 
which I do believe that. But to a certain extent, it's learned. That's why you're in the practice room, so that you can get better. But if you don't have interpersonal skills or what I sometimes call soft skills and many of the skills that I refer to in the book, then, like I said, you may get the gig, but you won't keep it. You won't be there for long because nobody will be able to stand working with you. I worked with a young drummer at the University of Memphis. I will not mention his name. This young man was so talented was so good. He was exceptional. He could drum and sing at the same time, simultaneously. And he had a magnificent singing voice. But he had an ego. He was good, and he knew he was good. And he knew that no one could touch him. And I think that that served as a problem for him early on in his career, because he, had to, he was a rock star at 18. Right. I have watched him develop and become the quintessential musician, but I have also watched him develop and turn into the quintessential human being. He's a wonderful person now. And not that he wasn't a wonderful person before, he just had a big head. Right? Now he's a wonderful person that recognizes that, you know, he is not the end all be all, that there are other people who are just as talented as he is. I've seen him now. He, he has his own website. He's released his own album. I think he moved to Los Angeles for a while. He's moved to Nashville. He's really working the industry, and I'm so proud of what he's doing. But I just remember, you know, telling him, you know, you've got a big head, or you need to slow down, or, you know, you need to check yourself. I remember having these conversations with him as a youth, and he's grown into a really wonderful, successful young man. So that, to me, is an example of everything that I teach today, which means taking responsibility for your career, recognizing that you may have a personality problem or an attitude problem or a behavioral problem or all sorts of other issues that you need to address if you want to be competitive. We're so used to now communicating through smartphones and through tablets and through laptops and we're, we don't have as many conversations with people as we used to. What I've noticed is that the most successful musicians, producers, engineers know how to hold a conversation. And it's very difficult, especially when I'm speaking with my audio production students. They spend a lot of time in the studio, much like a classical musician spends a lot of time in the practice room. So they don't have a lot of interaction with other people. The most successful people are the people who do know how to interact with other people. And also what I'm noticing in the industry now is that people are changing their mindset. They're recognizing that the field is so competitive that they have to think like an entrepreneur. They have to have an entrepreneurial mindset. They have to have a set of goals. They have to be optimistic. They have to be enterprising. They have to be innovative. They have to always ask questions. They have to execute. And those are some of the skills that are really difficult to teach. These are sort of the, the sort of things that a student can't say, well, I didn't learn that in school. Well, no one learns that in school. These are the types of skills that you need to recognize and cultivate on your own. And successful people are doing exactly that. I didn't realize the, the wealth of not just information, but inquisitiveness here on this campus and within this department. Jacobs wants their students to succeed. They want their students to be better. And that's saying a lot when you're dealing with some of the best musicians in the world and you're saying that you want them to be even better. Now I see that Jacobs also wants their students to be competitive because they recognize that this is a changing marketplace. So for them to invite someone like me, and I really want to thank um, Elaine and uh, Dean Richards for bringing me here because I recognize that I do have something to give. And the reason I recognize that is because they recognize it in me. So if they can do that for me, can you imagine what they can do for their students? I see them recognizing success in their students and wanting to make sure that they reach their goals. 